In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. I'm so happy to welcome you, the friends and family of the Labetti family, and the friends and family of the uh, McCarthy family. Uh, some of you have driven, I know, uh, quite a distance from Long Island, New York, including Father Walter here. So we welcome you here to St. Agnes Church. And I have to tell you, uh, these are special days. I'll be doing this in about three weeks for someone else. I've been here 19 years, and Alicia was like, how old, Alicia, were you when I got here? You were like five years old. And uh, so this is a very much an honor for us to be here and to witness this sacred matrimony. And because it is a special event of God's love, of a couple engaging in the covenant of God's love, we join, we join in song and praise of God. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness uphold what you have established for the increase of the human race, so that the union you have created may be kept safe by your assistance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words. Blessed are you, O God of our fathers, Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. 
You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it's not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect hospitality, for though if some have unknowingly entertained angels, be mindful of prisoners as if sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated as of yourselves, for you also are in the body. Let marriage be honored among all, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled. Let your life be free from love of money, but be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, once said, You did not choose me, but I chose you, that you should go and bear fruit that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. We certainly live in a world with a lot of choices. Many of our individual preferences can be met. Will it be whole milk, skim milk, 1%, 2%, or even much to the consternation of the dairy farmer, almond milk? Remember the old Burger King slogan, have it your way right away at Burger King now? Our culture seems to really value the capacity to have our our whims and our, our preferences satisfied. Patrick and Alicia have chosen to invite us here to this sacred place, this place in which Alicia was formed in, in her faith because it seems as if they've, they've made a choice, and quite a radical one at that, out of everyone else in the whole entire world. They've chosen each other. To an outsider, someone who might not know Patrick or Alicia very well, it might seem like, well, here's another choice, like so many we make. This is my preference, and that's what this is all about, satisfying uh, my preference. But I think in this church today, we know that there's something deeper going on in the hearts of Alicia and Patrick. Unfortunately, if the reason to marry someone is only to to satisfy some whims and, and personal preferences, we are on rather shaky ground to start. You see, we human beings are dynamic creatures. Hopefully we we grow, hopefully we change as we get older. Inevitably, these things happen. We never get younger, by the way. We always happen to get older. Undoubtedly, if the decision to marry someone was based solely on my vision of what I want in another, Eventually, I would be doomed to disappointment. Alicia and Patrick have chosen to call us here to this sacred place because they believe, as they firmly commit themselves to each other forever, that Almighty God, in His infinite wisdom, chose to create them for each other. From the beginning, God made them male and female. My brothers and sisters, Christian marriage has absolutely nothing to do with selfishness. It has everything to do with self-gift. And Alicia and Patrick, in discovering each other, they have discovered someone they want to serve with love. They have chosen to become self-gift to each other. Uh, Why? Why? Well, Alicia chose to have her pastor here. Patrick chose to have the pastor of his youth here. Because, by the grace of God, we have had the privilege of watching them 
through the guidance of their dear families, their dear parents, watching and witnessing them allow Jesus Christ to be a part of their lives. Jesus Christ was a part of their lives before they even met each other. And once that self-emptying love of Christ is poured within you, you can't contain it. You have to share it. Knowing him since he was a boy, I can say, Patrick could never keep the love of God inside of him. I think that he was at the church more than I was when I was the pastor there. Uh, my mother, of course, read the Sunday Bulletin every week because her, it was her son's parish. And every week she would tell me without fail, I saw my, daily pic my weekly picture of Patrick. Because Patrick was always in there, uh, involved in all sorts of parish activities. Whether that was carrying the cross for a Eucharistic procession, or playing one of the sporting events at our Life Team Nights, or even donning the Easter Bunny costume for the parish fair. <laughs> you know, it was never about Patrick. It was always about others, case in point, the Easter Bunny scenario. Unfortunately, at one point during the parish fair, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Um, <laughs> Patrick was in his Easter Bunny outfit with two young ladies, I would say about three or four years old, and it just so happened he had a costume malfunction. The Easter Bunny's head fell off. And his first concern, of course, was that these little ones not be traumatized for the rest of their lives. So he immediately picked that, that head up put it right back on, and started to comfort them. I'm not quite sure if it worked, because from then on in, they were always leery of the Easter Bunny and ran away. Um, but you can see there that, that just that desire to serve. And Alicia, I'll leave it to, to your pastor to talk about all the ways I'm sure you, in your life growing up here in this beautiful community, you also chose to serve. You can't help it because Jesus Christ is within you. And we celebrate that today in this beautiful sacrament. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. I think that scripture readings, Alicia and Patrick chose for this liturgy speak deeply of this idea of marriage as something instituted by God that is about total self-giving, just as God is total self-gift. Let's start with the first reading, a part of the Old Testament that's not always very well known, but I, I think is probably one of the most intriguing books of the Old Testament, the book of Tobit. We heard a prayer in this first reading, a prayer from Tobiah on his wedding night. There are actually three prayers in the book of Tobit. Um, one is from Tobiah's father, Tobit, and one is, is from his wife, uh, Sarah, in addition to this one. Tobiah and Sarah offered prayers that were not about self-giving. They were prayers that fell into despair. Tobiah suffered from blindness. It was very difficult for him to the point where he actually prayed to the Lord that he might take his life. Sarah had even a worse problem than that. She was plagued by a demon, Asmodeus. And every time she would get married, and she tried seven times, on the wedding night the husband would die because of this evil spirit. And, and she got pretty desperate at this point. And when, when Tobiah said, because he was inspired by the angel Raphael, I, I, I will pick up the mantle 
and I, I would like to, to marry Sarah. Uh, Sarah's father actually dug the grave before the wedding night, thinking, well, just, just in case, I'll get ready. But in the midst of this, Sarah also prayed that the Lord might take her. She was so filled with sadness, so overwhelmed by her cross, so concerned for what she was going through. But notice the prayer of, of this, this first reading. How does it conclude? It doesn't conclude with death. It concludes with life. That the Lord might grant us a happy life together. And Tobiah is someone who did not think of himself. He lived in the self-giving love of God to the point where he was deeply concerned about his, his, his father Tobit and his blindness and was able to be used by Almighty God as an instrument to bring about his healing. And the same holds true for Sarah as a result of, of his prayer and the intercession of, of the angel, um, that evil spirit was taken away. Because you see, when we are about self-giving love, we are about the promotion of life. Tobiah chose life, and chose life as God intends it, a life of charity and service. We know that there, there are three basic commitments made in Catholic marriage uh, to unity. Patrick and Alicia commit themselves to each other and to God. Indissolubility, they do this forever. And finally, in openness to life. In openness to new life. And many times when we think about that, of course, we first and foremost think about the blessing of, of children from the marriage, but also we should think about, in a broader sense, just the promotion of life. Self-giving love brings about life. And so we hear in our second reading today about the importance of hospitality. Alicia and Patrick chose that reading because they know their love is not to be confined to themselves. They know it has to be shared. And indeed, hospitality is a particularly Christian virtue. The, the Benedictines have a saying. They are very well known for their hospitality. And the saying goes along the lines of, we must welcome all who come to us as if they were Christ. We know Jesus said it. Whatever you do for the least of your brothers or sisters, you do for me. And so, as Patrick and Alicia build their home, they have every intention of making that home a place of welcome, a place in which they can promote the dignity and the sanctity of all life. Because that love of Christ has been poured upon them. And so, we come to the gospel passage in which we are reminded by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that what God has brought together, no human being must separate. And as Patrick and Alicia live in God's self-emptying love, it is that love of God that will be the glue that will keep them together through the trials that sometimes happen in life. Once again, in a few moments, the gospel passage will be fulfilled. And a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia and Patrick. Thank you for saying yes to the Lord's call to the sacrament of marriage. Rely on him in your challenging moments. Praise him in your joys and allow him 
to enable you to always have hearts of generosity. For he truly is gracious, and he lives and reigns forever and ever. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he is already consecrated by holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities <clears throat> of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. <clears throat> Patrick and Alicia, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to, lo- to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Patrick, take you, Alicia, to be my wife. I, Patrick, take you, Alicia, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Alicia, take you, Patrick, to be my husband. I, Alicia, take you, Patrick, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you love you and to honor you all the days of my life all the days of my life may the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob the God who joined together our first parents in paradise strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church so that what God joins together no one may put asunder let us bless the Lord thanks be to God May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Thanks, Matt. Alicia, receive this ring. Alicia, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit.
Patrick receive this ring. Patrick receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Of in the Holy Spirit. Having heard God's sacred word and witnessed these sacred vows, we bring before God all of our prayers and needs. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That our church and world leaders will promote the family and true freedom to grow in holiness and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all married couples, and especially for Patrick and Alicia married today, May their love for each other grow always and bring them to God's eternal love in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all young and single people that they will always be open to hearing God's call to holiness in their own lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all those who are lonely and feel that they have no one who loves them, that God's grace and our charity may bring them healing and comfort, we pray to the Lord. For the families and friends of Patrick and Alicia, and for all who have walked life journeys, life's journey with them, may God grant them many blessings and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the deceased members of the McCarthy and Labetti families, may they rest in Christ's eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Gracious and loving God, hear these our prayers. Grant us your many blessings, and we offer all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage, and just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonders of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Geoffrey, our Bishop, the order of Bishop Saul, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Patrick and Alicia, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection, they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear brothers and sisters, 
Pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may, he may per mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, for man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Alicia, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice through Christ our Lord. Amen. As is tradition, the bride and the groom will be making a prayer to the Blessed Mother, and we invite you to pray to our Blessed Mother along with them. Please be seated. Once again, I welcome everybody here to this parish. Uh, 
when people come here and they see this church, St. Agnes, for the first time, they think in a mill town, they build a church like this. We're 100 years old. This church was started in 1921, so we're 100 years old. I forgot to welcome at the start of Mass as well my two brother priests, Father Charles, from Santa Mariches. Father Walter. What did I say? Charles. Sorry, Father Walter. From Santa Mariches. Sorry, Father Walter. <laughs> and Father Dominic. And we welcome them, of course, and we're glad that you've been here, and I thank you for the wonderful homily you gave us uh, for this marriage. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. There is a triple blessing for the bride and the groom. Well, it's no longer bride and groom. It's newly married. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity <clears throat> so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, it is my joy, my privilege, my honor to present to you for the first time Patrick and Alicia McCarthy. <laughs>